going everybody it's Eric with Anderson's Outdoors and I just wanted to give you guys a quick summer tour of our garden here in Albuquerque New Mexico we're in zone 7b and Albuquerque is at actually a mile high elevation we've been having a great summer here with lots of monsoon rains which has been really nice and it's just been a lot of work getting this going for everything from seed to planting it out and getting everything to where it is now and everything is looking superb so just wanted to share that with you guys hopefully it's an encouragement for you guys out there and uh, let's take a look at our New Mexico garden well, one of the first things I wanted to show you is uh, the sunflowers that we're growing these are Mongolian giant sunflowers and I bet this head sunflower flower head here probably weighs uh, two or three pounds it is loaded down right now it's not quite ready to harvest but uh, after it dries out just a little bit more I'm gonna cut it down and try to keep the birds from eating a lot of this seed I really love growing sunflowers they're just um, they're so cool looking they're beautiful um, this one was probably 10 feet tall before the head got so weighed down and now it's just squatted down here hanging down like this but man look at this thing it's just an amazing amazing plant the size of these leaves check these leaves out I love growing plants that just have big beefy beefy leaves and flowers and fruits it's just a it's a lot of fun so Mongolian giant variety that's been a lot of fun I've got a few others here in the garden that I can harvest and I'm hoping to be able to eat a lot of sunflower seeds off of those something else that I've uh, started growing it's actually kind of similar in some ways to sunflowers that I really like is this amaranth it's a when when they get really big like this one here or this guy over here they just get these nice nice thick stalks kind of like a sunflower would and uh, just beautiful beautiful seed heads on there um, and right under that here in this bed uh, I just did a video about this bed this thing was full of winter squash that I was so just I was super pumped about it but unfortunately the squash was not producing at all there were the, the plants were huge they looked great but there was just no fruit coming off of that thing so I went ahead and ripped that out and as you can see here I've got a decent amount of little seedlings coming up I've got turnips beets um, parsnips I've got carrots um, what else did I put in here I put some collards I've never grown collards before but I put some Georgia collards way down there towards the end and finally some pink Hungarian um, leaf lettuce that has grown really really well for me and I think those things should grow awesome this fall and into the winter for me coming over next this is <laughs> I've never done one of these before this is my bean my bean uh, tunnel <laughs> and it's not quite a hundred percent yet but um, I can't even reach the top of this thing here. I don't know how tall that is, so that's probably like seven or eight feet tall, and uh, they're, they're getting up there, but I love these beans. These are beans that I've been growing for quite a while. They are a traditional New Mexico bean that's been grown here in the Rio Grande Valley for hundreds of years. It's called the uh, Bolita bean, New Mexico Bolitas, and uh, it's a really, really good pinto-style bean that grows well and uh, these vines are pretty prolific and they just allow me to uh, to harvest and store a lot of awesome food to use throughout the fall and the winter so this year I've got this bean tunnel and then I've got two other trellises this one right here with this guy he's growing up and trying to get up into the tree there and then this one over here while I'm here, I have to say a few things about my pumpkins as well. This is the same variety of pumpkins that I usually always grow. And this year, I have more pumpkins uh, in my garden than I ever have before. I planted more pumpkin plants. This particular variety is called Kakai pumpkins. And uh, the Kakai pumpkin is a really, really nice looking pumpkin. Uh, you know just if you want to have it out for uh, like an ornamental pumpkin but also these guys produce those little green hullless pumpkin seeds so you can cut up cut open one of these pumpkins and just scoop the seeds out 
kind of rinse them off and then you have those fresh little green hullless pepitas that you can just eat straight out of the pumpkin. Right next to that, I have, I'm so excited about these raspberries. I've wanted for a long time to grow raspberries. This whole bed just really filled in very nicely. I planted three plants last fall and now with the summer rains, this bed is just, it's going crazy. And over here I've got a few that are uh, actually producing some nice red berries. I think this is heritage variety, um, red raspberries. So that's looking good. And I've got another amaranth there that's a little different color, more green. It's got a little bit of red uh, out on the tips. So, but I really like that amaranth there too. Here's a little stubby amaranth growing in the midst of my sweet potato bed. This is a four by eight, uh, four foot by eight foot raised bed, 10 inches deep with amended soil. And uh, it's just full of sweet potatoes. So before we have our first freeze, I'll come through and I'll, uh, I'll clear these vines out and then I'll dig this bed up. I'm really looking forward to see what kind of a sweet potato harvest we get out of this bed. And I've got a four by four bed right here also that is just chock full of sweet potatoes. I've really loved growing those over the last couple of years as well. So one thing that I try to do in my garden, um, kind of just my philosophy recently, is to try to grow things that I know will eat, but also things that I know will last or things that we can store. So that's why I'm growing so much, uh, you know, a lot of square footage in sweet potatoes and a lot of beans. Um, the pumpkins are that way. You can cut those pumpkins off and they'll store for, you know, a couple of months at least until um, you cut them open and get the seeds out. So I've really just found that, you know, I think a lot of people, they, they get um, excited about growing different kinds of things in their garden and uh, they don't really think about whether or not they're gonna eat all of that stuff. And I'm definitely that way too. I just get excited, I wanna grow this and I wanna grow that. <laughs> so, um, but I, I was finding that, you know, I would grow all this stuff and uh, a lot of it would go to waste because we just can't harvest it and eat it fast enough. So I started just thinking about what kinds of things that I know my family really likes um, and that we can incorporate into meals throughout the fall and the winter particularly. And those are just some of the things that I found that are um, really useful for us in our home and that uh, we really enjoy eating and that I can grow in my zone here in this climate and uh, just really works well for me. So that's why I've got so much uh, invested in like four trellises worth of beans and you know, how many square feet? Uh, four by eight is 32. I've got, what's that? So, you know, I've got, and 16, uh, I've got nearly 50 square feet of my raised bed gardens that are dedicated to um, <laughs> growing sweet potatoes. I'm terrible at math, but I can grow a sweet potato. So anyway, <laughs> in my book, that's worth a lot. So anyway, let me show you what's going on in the rest of the garden. Just a few more things to show you here, starting with what's right behind me. And uh, that's a few of these tomatoes that I decided to grow. When I came out last night and looked up here, these are my um, Brad's Atomic Grape Tomato. And look at that, what a name, Brad's Atomic Grape. And look at how purple these are when they're immature. So the fruits are still ripening. As they ripen, they turn, they're just beautiful. They, they look tie-dyed almost. Look at these guys right there. And then we'll come down here and some of these, these are, these are more ready to eat but uh, just beautiful, beautiful tomatoes. And I don't even like tomatoes. But anyway, I came out last night and I looked up here and look at this. It's been chewed bare. And I was like, what? I had hardly seen any tomato worms all season. And so I started looking around and I found this big old fat tomato worm on there who has done a lot of, a lot of damage to that. 
This one over here, this is called Purple Bumblebee. I've mentioned this in a couple of my other videos, but another just gorgeous, gorgeous. I mean, look at the color on that. I gotta try that. So here's the thing. You may have seen, and uh, if you watch some of my previous videos, I did a video on single stem trellising your tomatoes and why I do that. And I tasted one of these and it was all right. Um, but man, I just, I gotta try another one. Let's see how this one is. I hate tomatoes, I just, yeah, not my favorite, ugh. I wish I liked them, because they're so, these are so beautiful. Nope, no. I think I better try, I'm gonna try one of these Brad's Atomic Grape Tomatoes. So let's see how this one goes. Mm. It's got a real different flavor. Right now, that's a lot sweeter than the purple bumblebee. I actually almost think that I kind of like this tomato, which I think that's a first. I've never... Mm. Wow. Yeah, I would have to admit, right now, I can tolerate this tomato. That is an absolute first for me. Wow. Wouldn't have expected that, but I'm excited because these things are so beautiful. Earlier in the day, I came out and there were a couple mushroom basket tomatoes that were ripe. I'll see if I can find some more that are in here that are ripe. They're amazing. They're a bigger tomato and uh, just amazing color, so. See if I can find any of those in here for you. So this here, this is this is kind of a jungle of tomatillo mixed in with this mushroom basket tomato plant that I have. Oh, and my onions! Check these guys out. So excited about these onions. These are yellow Spanish sweet onions. And uh, they're coming along really well. I'm excited about those. I hope that I will get a really good crop. That may be one of the reasons why I did not have tomato worms on my tomatoes this year until I found, you know, just recently. Um, but maybe because those onions were growing right in there. But here's a little immature mushroom basket tomato. If I can get that in the screen there in the frame. Not ripe. But um, these things just turn a really beautiful pinkish, purplish, almost like fuchsia color when they're when they're ripe. So I'm really excited about these tomatillos also. I don't really know, this is kind of what, an example of what I was just talking about. I grew these because I was excited about it. My brother had grown some tomatillos last year and I was like, those things are so cool, I wanna grow them. And so I have, look how beautiful those are. These little, they're almost like paper lantern-like coverings around the tomatillo is inside that. And when it's ripe, this will dry out and start to pop. And this over here, this is my fig tree that I started from a cutting from my parents' fig tree. And it has grown quite a lot. I'm really excited about that. It's got a few figs on there. So that should be really exciting, really exciting into the future those fig trees so anyway guys that is it from the anderson's outdoors summer garden hope you enjoyed our garden tour hope you found it to be kind of encouraging as you think about what you can do with garden space that you have in your own yard and uh yeah i'm just happy to be able to share with you what we're doing how we're doing it and what a exciting and wonderful thing a backyard garden can be in your life so thanks for watching this episode of anderson's outdoors you guys take it easy and we will catch you next time